What if the Maya didn't vanish, but evolved? Our story begins in the heart of Copan, a once majestic city in modern-day Honduras. Ancient DNA, preserved in the bones of long-gone citizens, whispers tales of resilience. Despite political collapse and the abandonment of famous city-states around AD 750 to 900, the genetic code reveals something unexpected. The Maya were never replaced, never erased. They remained, rooted, enduring, and connected across centuries. But the story doesn't end there. Beneath the sacred sinkhole of Chichen Itza lies evidence of a ritual that challenges earlier assumptions. Young boys, some closely related, some even identical twins, were offered in ceremonies tied to the mythic hero twins of the Popol view. In these lives and sacrifices, legends were reenacted. Culture was affirmed. Through ancient DNA, myth meets science, collapse meets continuity, and the true legacy of the Maya emerges, not as a people who disappeared, but as one who adapted, endured, and persists. For more than a century, the so-called collapse of the Maya civilization has been one of archaeology's great enigmas. Visitors to the vast ruins of Tikal, Copan, and Palenque have long wondered how such a sophisticated culture, known for its mathematics, astronomy, and monumental cities, could have disappeared so suddenly. Early explorers and scholars in the 19th and 20th centuries described the Maya as a lost civilization, abandoned and forgotten until rediscovery in the jungle. The term collapse itself implied not just decline, but total extinction. As archaeological research deepened, explanations multiplied. Some proposed catastrophic warfare that destabilized the kingdoms. Others pointed to devastating droughts, confirmed by lake sediment cores and cave stalagmites, which reveal prolonged dry periods around AD 800 to 900. Still others emphasized the stresses of population growth, soil exhaustion, and political overreach. The picture that emerged was one of complexity, but the dominant narrative remained. The Maya as a people had somehow vanished. Recent decades have shown just how misleading this idea was. While major city-states across the southern lowlands did experience dramatic decline around the late 8th and 9th centuries, this was not the end of the Maya. Northern centers like Chichen Itza and later Mayapan flourished for centuries afterward. Millions of Maya descendants continue to live across Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador, maintaining languages, traditions, and worldviews that trace back to their ancestors. Now, ancient DNA adds another layer to this re-evaluation. Genetic studies allow us to look directly into the ancestry of individuals who lived before, during, and after the political upheavals of the classic period. Instead of evidence of disappearance, DNA reveals remarkable continuity. The same genetic lineages found in ancient remains persist in modern Maya communities, demonstrating that what ended was a political order, not a people. This shift in perspective is critical. It reminds us that the language of collapse often obscures more than it reveals. Civilizations do not vanish in a moment. They adapt, migrate, and transform. What we are uncovering is not the story of extinction, but the story of resilience. And the Maya, far from being a mystery of disappearance, become a case study in cultural persistence over deep time. At the heart of this new understanding lies the city of Copan, a jewel of the southern Maya lowlands. Famous for its intricately carved stele and hieroglyphic stairway, Copan was once the seat of a powerful dynasty. Archaeologists have studied its monuments for decades, but only recently have we begun to uncover the genetic stories of the people who lived there. Ancient DNA, painstakingly extracted from skeletal remains, reveals that the classic Maya population of Copan was not composed of outsiders or conquerors, but of people with deep, local roots. Their genetic ancestry stretches back to the late Archaic period, more than a thousand years before Copan rose to prominence. This continuity suggests that the foundations of Maya civilization were laid not by migrating newcomers, but by long-established communities who developed agriculture, built villages, and gradually transformed into the complex societies of the classic era. Yet the DNA also shows another important pattern, connection. Alongside local ancestry, researchers have identified genetic signals linking Copan's population with groups from highland Mexico. These traces of gene flow are not evidence of mass migration, 
but rather of contact, marriages, alliances, and exchanges that carried both ideas and people across regions. Such findings match what archaeologists see in the material record. Obsidian from central Mexico, architectural styles with foreign influence, and inscriptions that mention rulers from distant lands. Copan, then, was never an isolated kingdom. It was deeply Maya in origin, yet part of a broader web of interaction that stretched across Mesoamerica. This balance between rootedness and openness is striking. It challenges earlier notions that the Maya cities were either insular or suddenly overrun by outsiders. Instead, Copan's genetic record shows a society both grounded in local traditions and enriched by wider networks. The people buried in its tombs were inheritors of millennia of continuity, even as they lived in a world of exchange and cultural blending. By tracing these genetic threads, we begin to see Maya history not as a story of isolation and collapse, but as one of deep ancestry woven together with long-distance connections. The Maya were at once profoundly local and unmistakably global within their own world, an identity sustained by roots in the land, yet open to ideas and influences from beyond. When archaeologists speak of the Maya collapse, they are referring to a series of dramatic changes between AD 750 and 900. Across the southern lowlands, great cities like Tikal, Palanc, and Copan saw their political systems weaken. Monument buildings slowed and then ceased, royal dynasties faltered, and populations thinned. For centuries, the jungle slowly reclaimed the plazas and temples that had once been vibrant centers of life. But ancient DNA offers a crucial perspective. This decline was not the disappearance of a people, but a contraction of population and power. Genetic studies show that the lineages of the classic Maya did not vanish in this period. Instead, while city-states fragmented and urban populations declined, communities endured. Smaller, less centralized, but still connected by heritage. Environmental pressures played a role. Paleoclimate evidence indicates that this period coincided with a series of severe droughts, reducing crop yields and straining an already dense population. Combined with evidence of intensified warfare and political rivalries among city-states, the stresses became overwhelming. Rulers could no longer sustain the monumental projects or the complex hierarchies that had once defined Maya kingship. Yet the people themselves did not vanish. Archaeological surveys show continued habitation in rural areas, even as urban centers were abandoned. Genetic data supports this. Lineages persist uninterrupted, meaning that the Maya survived these centuries of upheaval by adapting. They left the great stone cities not because their culture had ended, but because the political and environmental systems that supported urban life had collapsed. This pattern challenges older interpretations that equated the loss of monumental architecture with cultural extinction. In fact, what disappeared was not the Maya, but the political structures of the classic period. The DNA makes this distinction clear. There was demographic decline, but not genetic erasure. The descendants of those who lived through the upheaval remain today in the millions, carrying with them languages, traditions, and knowledge passed down from their ancestors. By reframing the so-called collapse in terms of continuity, we gain a deeper appreciation of the Maya story. It is not one of disappearance, but of survival under pressure, an enduring lineage that persisted through crisis and transformation. If Copan gives us insight into Maya ancestry and continuity, Chichen Itza reveals how myth, ritual, and genetics intertwined in profound ways. Among its many monuments, none is more enigmatic than the sacred cenote, a deep, natural sinkhole where offerings were made to the gods. For decades, divers recovered artifacts of jade, gold, and pottery from its depths, along with human remains. These finds suggested that sacrificial rituals played a central role in Chichen Itza's religious life. Until recently, however, we knew little about who these individuals were. Ancient DNA has now begun to answer that question. Genetic analyses of child remains from the cenote reveal something remarkable. Many of the children were closely related, and in some cases, they were brothers. Among them were sets of siblings and even identical twins. This finding directly resonates with Maya mythology, specifically, the story of the hero twins from the Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the Quiche Maya. The hero twins, Hunapu and Ixbalanc, are central figures in Maya cosmology, 
They descend into the underworld, challenge the lords of death, and through sacrifice and rebirth, help to restore balance to the world. Their story is one of struggle, sacrifice, and cosmic renewal. The discovery of twin sacrifices at Chichen Itza suggests that the Maya were not only retelling these myths, but ritually enacting them. By offering siblings, and especially twins, to the gods, they may have been recreating the mythic drama that sustained their worldview. These findings deepen our understanding of Maya ritual practice. Sacrifice, long viewed simply as an act of appeasement to deities, emerges here as a symbolic reenactment of sacred narrative. The choice of children, innocent, pure, and often related, underscored the continuity between family, community, and cosmic order. The DNA reveals that these were not anonymous victims, but individuals chosen from within society to embody sacred roles. What makes this discovery even more striking is its cultural persistence. The hero twins myth remained central to Maya storytelling well into the colonial period and beyond, surviving centuries of upheaval. Now, through DNA, we see how myth was lived in practice. The people of Chichen Itza used ritual not only to honor the gods, but to weave their own children into the cosmic cycle of death and renewal. Far from being random acts of violence, these sacrifices were acts of meaning, rooted in myth, memory, and the enduring framework of Maya belief. The story of the Maya does not end with the fall of their great cities, nor with the sacrifices at Chichen Itza. Ancient DNA allows us to trace a direct line from the people who built pyramids and carved stelae to the millions of Maya who live today across southern Mexico and Central America. In their genes, their languages, and their traditions, the legacy of the ancient Maya remains unmistakably alive. Genetic studies comparing ancient remains with modern populations confirm this continuity. The same ancestral lineages that appear in Copan and Chichen Itza still circulate among Maya communities today. Far from being replaced by waves of outsiders, the Maya show remarkable persistence through centuries of political upheaval, colonial disruption, and social change. This continuity underscores what many indigenous Maya people have always known, that their heritage is unbroken. But DNA is only one piece of the story. Language is another. Today, more than six million people speak one of the many Mayan languages, from Caiche in Guatemala to Yucatec Maya in Mexico's Yucatan. These languages carry with them not just words, but ways of seeing the world, cosmologies, oral histories, and worldviews that reach back into the classic and pre-classic periods. Just as DNA connects past to present biologically, language carries cultural memory forward across generations. Tradition also speaks to continuity. Agricultural practices, such as the cultivation of maize, beans, and squash in milpa systems, echo ancient methods that sustained classic Maya society. Ceremonies honoring ancestors in sacred places reveal a worldview where the living and the dead remain connected, just as in ancient times. Even under the pressures of Spanish conquest and centuries of colonization, Maya identity endured, adapting while retaining its core. What the genetic record makes clear is that the so-called collapse was never an ending, but a transformation. The Maya shifted from monumental urban kingdoms to dispersed rural communities and later adapted to life under colonial rule. But the people themselves, both biologically and culturally, never disappeared. Today, when we speak of the Maya, we are not only describing an ancient civilization of the past, we are also speaking of living nations, resilient communities that embody one of the longest continuous cultural lineages in human history. The DNA confirms what the living Maya have always maintained. Their story is not one of disappearance, but of survival and persistence.